Today's topic, reinventing your career after 50, especially when traditional retirement is not a valid option. Thanks so much for tuning into Second Act TV. I am so happy to introduce you to John Tarnoff today. John, thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Silka. Great to be with you. I, I mean, I really, really am excited because you the book you wrote, Boomer Reinvention, just completely speaks, obviously, to me and, and to what I'm doing here on Second Act TV, which is all about reinventing life after 50. Your, your specific focus, of course, is career and the, the state of the boomers and what we've gotten ourselves into to where we can't retire as we planned. That's right. uh, kind of talk about that and tell us how, how you arrived at, at writing this book. Well, this was really the light bulb moment for me is, uh, uh, and I talk about this in the book, I kind of lead off the book with the idea that I, I wrote the book because I, I really can't afford to retire. And uh, I think that this is a situation that, that really a great majority of people in our generation are, are facing and the stats really bear this up. There's a, there's a heap of numbers about this, but where I come out on this is that probably about 80% of the baby boomer generation, and those are people who were born between 1946 and 1964, uh, do not have enough money saved for retirement that's going to be able to sustain them in anything near the quality of lifestyle that they're currently living. Well, and, and, and the good news is that we're living longer. The bad news is we have to work longer. Or is it right. bad news? <laughs> right. Well, you know, it is good news, bad news. It's, uh, I think, you know, it does come down to quality of life. And uh, I think career is part of quality of life. And particularly for our generation, we were raised with this. I mean, hippies or not, we were raised with this, with this work ethic. And I think one of the things that we are known for in the in the in the HR community in the economy in the, the corporate world is for for having this strong work work ethic and I look around at people in their you know mid fifties into their sixties who are finding it difficult to stay in their jobs or if they've been for whatever reason tossed out of their jobs having an even more difficult time landing a new job or starting a new business I mean this is a this is a huge kind of a, uh, a, a, a non sequitur conundrum uh, <laughs> shock yeah. for, for, for all of us. Yeah. Well, and, and you went through it multiple times, as you say to you. Well, well, then that goes back to the question of why I wrote the book. I mean, I, I come out of the entertainment business. I was a film studio executive for many, many years uh, up until 2010. Uh, the, the last gig that I had uh, formerly in the movie business was working for DreamWorks Animation. Um, I had a stint in the 90s where I kind of veered off into technology. I had a startup. And, and really, when the startup crumbled at the uh, when the bubble happened, uh, the bubble burst in 2001, along with all the other startups, uh, I had this kind of wall that I hit in my career where I thought, well, I can't really kind of go backwards to the movie business jobs that I had had. I kind of aged out a little bit. I hadn't really kept up my network in that area. I didn't really want to do those jobs anymore. But I had no idea what I wanted to do. So I decided to kind of bet the farm on going back to school, earning a psychology degree. Um, and why a psychology degree? Because I had always been interested uh, in psychology. And I felt that uh, not necessarily that I was going to become a psychologist or a counselor, but that at the very least, I would learn more about myself. I would learn more about how to perhaps better communicate with people, understand people better and position myself for a new job, which led to going to DreamWorks and kind of getting back into the movie business. But the interesting thing about that reinvention, and that was kind of the key reinvention for me, was that I was doing very, very different work at DreamWorks. I was not doing the production and development of movies that I had been doing before. I was engaged in uh, people activities, um, leadership development, artistic development, uh, school outreach, uh, really building their human capital and their creative capital. Uh, and that was an area that I was very, very drawn into. And that really informed where my career is now. And, um, and ultimately, in looking at the plight of the boomer generation, decided that this was an area that I wanted to, uh, to, to work on, both for my own edification and my own, my own um, I guess, survival in my career, but also to, to help uh, others. 
Well, we talk a lot, have in, you know, in other interviews talked about the, the whole thing when you wake up after 50, all of a sudden, or, or I should say there's an awakening that I experienced that, you know, we look for purpose and for passion. Absolutely. And Absolutely. That is a big difference. Yeah. Whether we have to work or not, it's now we have the opportunity to bring passion and purpose to our work. And right. that's, this is what I loved about, well, what you're describing so much, because I think you did that. You took right. what you knew and then right. really dug in deep. Yeah. Well, I'll let you, it, you describe it, what you did. <laughs> it, well, well, yeah, no, but, but I think it's an imperative. I think you're describing something which, and, and this actually kind of came out in the, in, in the psychology training is this, this idea that as we get older and, and the work of Eric Erickson talks about this uh, very specifically, uh, we are, we are meaning and purpose driven because we get to the point in life where we realize that it's, I mean, we may have known that we were going to die at some point, but now it's becoming much more present. And uh, I, I kind of half joke about this in the book that the, that the uh, funerals and memorial services that we are finding ourselves attending and will find ourselves attending more and more uh, have replaced the rituals of our younger years where we were going to wedding showers and baby showers and uh, graduations. So this is the life stage that we're in, right? I, and, it's funny you mentioned that because I, that was one of the notes I circled when I read the book and wrote down. I thought that was such a great example of, of, of really what the state of our existence is right now. Yeah. So, so we, we have to kind of get out of any denial that we're in about the time we have left, what we're going to do with this time. And I think it's fair to say that most of us want to leave a legacy in some form. And it not, it's not necessarily... I mean, we, we may or may not have kids that we want to give stuff to, but I think, you know, the sense of, of what do they do here, you know, and, and all these cliches about uh, uh, what you reflect on from your deathbed and doesn't matter how much money you made, it's how many, how many people's lives you touched. And, and this is true, right? So, so we now have this opportunity to do it at a time when in our economy, we're being told that we are too old, too out of touch, too expensive, too overqualified. <laughs> You know, the litany goes on. Yep, exactly. Well, and, and you know, again, as I said at the beginning of our segment, you, you just totally speak to one, to me, and then to our audience. So I'm really excited to get into the book and into the how-to steps of doing this. So let's uh, take a quick break. We'll come back on another segment, and let's get into your book and how we recreate our dream career at, in our second act. See you in a minute. Thanks so much for watching. For more videos about recreating life after 50, click on the link that's right next to me. And don't forget to subscribe to our program. Here's the button.